We are back for episode number seven, or the uh, seventh layer of Dante's Inferno. And um, today I have been tasked with the duties of introducing this latest episode for Jeff Howard, one of our more favorite people in the world of um, film and all things curation thereof. Jeff. How are you doing today on this uh, wondrous occasion of November 1st, 2024, and this may be your final broadcast into the interstellar universe that we live in? Well, it might be our final time sitting at the mics. uh, Together. Together in a democratic nation. Is that what you're implying? Um, A little bit of that. But by the way, my only note on your introduction, which was lovely, is you didn't introduce yourself. I didn't. Um, I was being presumptive that the audience already knew who I was, considering that they've listened to the other six previous episodes. And your name will be in the title of the episode. Absolutely, as, as well. And I will probably be jailed by then uh, as, as well, by the time this hits the air uh, as, as well. Have you already voted in Atlanta? I have already voted so in Atlanta. So you voted uh, in advance in yes. person, mail? Oh, in person. In, yeah, I only in advance. In I, I only feel comfortable uh, in in person uh, as, as as well. I mean, it's a weird thing. I have um, turned into an old black man, and I feel the need to go down to the polling center and stand there in line and and d- demand my um, freedom of expression. And it feels good to do it. I do it in person because oh, I, I love the feeling. Yeah. And yes, because I, we, we get a certain amount of news where people claim mm-hmm. that mail-in ballots are fraudulent. And I'm like, fine. I will Even four years ago, wearing a mask, I did it in person because yes, I was I like, too. fuck this shit. Yes. I don't want anyone claiming that my ballot's not legit. Right. Because your ballot is legit. But they want to make it illegitimate. There are some who think a vote not for them is a vote that shouldn't be counted. <laughs> is that what we're... Should, well, we, should we discuss it right off the bat? I mean, this is our... This is our... We always... But that's the, we, f- the foundation of how this country was built is, is yeah. on that principle of not everybody is allowed to vote or should vote. Or is, you know qualified to vote in their eyes very much very much we have we have traditions we do i mean we must keep them up i mean there's a there's a great legend of how they didn't want jews to own property in missouri you know as they were taming the west as as well they wanted to limit the number of non-christians in the uh in the new west as as well you kind know of, it kind of explains a lot it's about what's going on today. <laughs> a little bit. Just a little bit. Just Absolutely. because we're... Uh, so, so we are sitting down. You named it. It's November 1st. Yeah. Which means Tuesday is, is um, election day. Election day. Yeah. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. This is the last And weekend. we know that there probably won't be a result till Wednesday or Thursday or I Friday would imagine I'm going to call it as at least... My over-under is... Uh, the best case scenario week, worst case scenario first week of December. Although That's how clearly I before by 5 p.m. Eastern. Sure, they'll call it. Someone will but, claim they won. Sure, but then when do the skirmishes break out? I mean, I have friends that literally think that like wing nuts are going to just start running around with, you know, nine millimeters AKs and sawed offs and start, you know, attacking people. But they're all chicken shit. Agreed. Um, that is one of the things that I've noticed about conservatives. You hit them in the nose and it's like punching a bully. Because when you are in the wrong, you are inherently chicken shit. It's, it, it's one of the, the, the great things of the universe that's a truism. Because, you know, people that walk in truth, they don't want to fight with anybody. They're not starting issues. Yeah, no, I don't walk around going, no. the earth is a sphere, and let me convince you. I'm, co- I'm comfortable. Right. I'm comfortable with the earth sure. being a sphere. Right. A little, little thick in the middle, you know. Well, aren't we all? That's from, uh, and that's me trying to talk about science because it's a more comforting it subject. It does. It is cumbersome. 
you you stumbled your way through that. That was nice, though. But you are educated in California, so you get a pass. I went to a university in California. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, one of the best. Yeah, but you went to high subsidized. school in California in the know. era in the vaunted era of going to high school. You know, like we all fantasize about having gone to high school in California in the 1980s, which is hilarious, by the way, because there's so many movies that have documented this. Right. It so looked for, like you guys were having a good time, but you're all idiots. You know for, that, For right? Gen X. So Gen X. Sure. Because so well, we many envied you. Films. We thought that was so cool. Oh, wow. I wish I could have hung out with them there, you know, and yeah. gone to the mall. And we were just like everybody else. I want to meet Jennifer Jason Leigh and Phoebe Cates. Yeah, that would have Yeah, been. they said, look at you. you. You changed. You got a little warmer when I said Phoebe Cates. Everybody. Who did of it? Of my generation. Well, absolutely. But that's the point. Everyone, everyone attracted to women were like... <laughs> Well, <laughs> we were like, what the hell did I just see? What was see? that? What was that? that and was... then uh, Kevin Klein said, thank you very much. And she is yeah, off She might market. be 20 years younger Who than cares? me. He was, just, he was on it. This is my Good but, for him, though. But he's a very charismatic guy. And they've stayed together, Isn't too. he a Jew? They both is. Oh, wow. So she's in my uh, I believe top Kate's, tenant. I think her family was cats, and then they changed it okay, to try so to Okay, so she's in my, uh, you know, I, I have my running list of super hot Jewish women. Um, so Bob Newhart's wife is on it. She was Jewish. In real life? Look at you. Yes, I don't she know. was. No, I, I researched it. Was, she, really? was, she was Jewish. Kim Novak from, um, you know, Hitchcock, Vertigo, Jewish. Yeah. Oh, yes, yes, I thought. Yeah, she's pretty freaking hot hell yeah yeah and then um you know uh you know uh, i can't remember bob newhart's wife what's her name and she was in a hitchcock film too she's in the birds i could look it up Ugh, i was about God, to say that's terrible i was I'm about to say I'm so i wouldn't look if i was uh but she's was, hot too she i thought she was so hot when i was I, kid, but she's jewish of all the funny things bob newhart who's not jewish but he acted uh, like it i mean i don't care if the women are jewish or not but he actually all his tv wives were quite uh Bob's not nice stu- to look at. Bob's not stupid. Yeah, TV. Bob's not stupid. He played stupid. There's a difference. I saw a hilarious meme, and I hope he really did say it, but there was a thing where it, it attributed itself to Bob Newhart, and the, the joke was, I don't want to denigrate people who listen to country music, but if you listen to country music, I should explain that denigrate means to put down. See, he's a clever guy. Yeah, I like that. That's where we, we go. We need a little bit more of the Bob Newhart sensibility in this world now. He actually did a comedy album in the 1960s about the White House or whatever. Did a whole thing, a whole send up, as they used to say back then. By the way, I'm going to throw another uh, easy on the eyes Jewess at you. Ringo Starr's wife, yeah. Bond girl yeah, Barbara yeah, Bach. Bob, Barbara Bach, yeah. She's yeah. in there too. So. I, always, I think maybe the, the name was Bachman or something. It was, I think it was. Yeah, it was, yeah. it was. Yeah, that's uh, I mean, Lady Gaga is Jewish. Too, and so. not to really, I thought she was an Italian. I don't think she's Italian. Ariana Stephanie. Grande is Italian. Yeah, I thought she was. I don't know. We had to research that one. Because I thought Ariana Grande was Jewish, but no, she is Italian. And then I thought she was mixed race, and then no, she's Italian. I had no idea. Yeah. I once gotten, well, anyway, we're talking about, this is not the subject we intended to discuss. No, but now we're talking about attractive Jewish women. Attractive Jewish women. Yeah. Which, uh, yeah. Well, that was because Phoebe, it got, we got on that subject because you, were ta- you finally informed me with something that, by the way, as a third generation Angelino, mm-hmm. totally unaware that people who didn't grow up here we're watching TV and seeing movies and saying to themselves, that's the place to be. Well, absolutely. I mean, think of all the TV shows that were set, too, like all the, the teen shows and coming-of-age shows and things like that. It was always set in Los Angeles, you know, yeah. with the, the pinnacle of that being Baywatch, you know, it, it's and 21 Jump Street. And, like, it's just L.A. was the place to be, to be a youth. Uh, square pegs, maybe. Yeah. Uh, um, I think it was a Boy Meets World and um, what's the one with Tiffany Amber Theason in it too? Is she Jewish? Uh, I don't know if she is. I don't know if she is. If she is, amen. If she is, um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was uh, uh, the one with Zach. Saved by the Bell. Saved by, by the, the bell. bell. I'm gonna say I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say Tiffany Amber Theason is Jewish. 
Uh, that is a limb. I mean, I'll take that limb. That's a limb. You're comfortable. You're comfortable Dude, saying that. That's a limb. Um, still, uh, she does a cooking thing on Instagram or whatever. You know, plated dishes and stuff like that. She's still delightful. It's 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 almost irritating at times. I'm like, God damn it, get old, please. You don't like. Uh, I get it. I get it. You know. You know. What I, but, I but she's also not. There is something I really appreciate about that particular person, which is. Uh, uh, doesn't conform to all beauty standards. I, I don't. No. My, my, when I've seen mm-hmm. like she's not plastic surgering her no, face, no. and she's not starving herself. She's no. a real human being, and she's showing that you can be beautiful without. I have an issue with. My apologies to people who are addicted to plastic mm-hmm. surgery, but like it just. I bring something to it emotionally where I feel bad that people feel they have to live to some kind of standard that means. Ending up looking like some kind of Joan Riversy alien. And here's the interesting part about that: um, we don't investigate that in our society. It's not discussed. It's not talked about. It's rarely written about. It's not in documentaries or anything. Like no one interviews those people. No one talks to those people and just asks them why. We are more quick to ask someone about their political affiliation than we are. Why do you have lip fillers? And you are a short, skinny, blonde-haired woman who naturally doesn't have lips that big. Yeah. And why, why is your neck 62 and your face Okay, you're 29? mean. Okay, you're, that was, that that was, was cool. mean. That was, a, that was a drive-by. That was. That was literally like I fired a, shots. a crypt blood I only say that because as of late, I finally noticed what my neck looks like in the mirror, and I'm like, there is no hiding Gobble, that gobble. Creep, creeping up on 60. What can you say? You're disgusting. Like, I can't even believe you're looking at your neck. Who are you? Wear a turtleneck and just keep it moving. That's a good idea. He's looking, he's looking at grow, your grow, neck. You have a neck beard. I love the idea of you sitting there in the morning looking at your neck, touching your neck, and your wife walks in and goes, like, what is wrong with you? Oh, it's more like I'm standing at the foot of the bed going, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Do you realize how old your husband is? It's pretty, you know, I guess I, but I enjoy I feel like it. Kevin Klein. Oh, my God, my neck. My neck is Kevin Klein. What, what, would, happen if, what would happen if I... Ran into Phoebe Cates and Kevin Klein, you know, at a bar in Beverly Hills, and and they invited me back to their hotel room. They they would look at my neck and go, "No, no, get out of here! No, yeah, this, not, this isn't gonna, this not. isn't gonna work. This was almost gonna be this the best gonna, night of your life, right? But no, your because neck. Phoebe would watch you and Kevin just that'd be that'd be the best night ever. What are you gonna do for her? But then she would say, "Your neck. Can you just angle it a little bit more this way so I can't see your?" Don't neck? take off that turtleneck, buddy. <laughs> Keep the turtleneck. Keep on the turtleneck. <laughs> Wear a black turtleneck like a like a mime. <laughs> All right, Kevin we're... Klein clocks in about twenty years older than you too, so it gets pretty weird. Yeah, you do realize that, right? He is an old man now. He yeah, he's seventy something, right? Yes, he is. Wonderful actor though. Wonderful. Wonderful. Actor. Comic and serious. Unbelievable. I love him in most things. You make me want to watch A Fish Called Wanda again. I haven't Absolutely. seen that for that 30 awesome. years. Mm. I, he loved him in Biko with Denzel Washington. He's in that. Wow, I had forgotten his involvement yeah, in that. He's, he's, he's got some real, real deal chops. For sure. Oh, yeah. All right. I'm going to... I'm going to shift us back to the election. Uh, back to the lecture at hand. Well, yeah. I mean, that was our that was our inspiration to sit down again. No, that was our way of coping with the fact that the world may be coming to an end, which yeah. I don't actually believe, by the way. Which is the part I do want to talk about. That I'm, I'm oh. tired of all of these like yeah, of the bleeding heart, and gloom. nutter liberals who think like the world's coming to an end. They almost have a hard on for it, you know. You would think they would be mobilized to say, hey, we want to save the planet, but they seem to be um, resolute with the idea of things just suck. Who cares? Whatever. You know, and I think that that's really sad. That's the biggest thing that I've gotten out of this. Um, It's not the um, uh, crackers with the bed sheets over their heads. I'm used to that. That's old hat. What I am disturbed about are these people that are uh, allegedly progressives, allegedly young as well, allegedly informed, allegedly smart, allegedly astute, 
that are cowering and sticking their heads in the sand and they're being really negative. You know, we know the ship is taking water. Shut the hell up and help us bail the water and stop talking about the ship taking water. That's the part that really is getting to me right now in this crunch time. You know, it's the fourth quarter. We're down by 10. No whining. I don't want to hear it. You going to play or not? Or go sit on the bench? Yeah, and I think I, a lot I, of them have decided to sit on the bench. And I'm offended. And, and I'm taking truth, names. we're not even down by 10, right? Like, no, we're we, are, not. we are obviously both rooting for it's, Harris. It's close. It's tight. And it's, it's, it's tight. It's a tie, and we're in overtime, right. but we're just praying that we right. hit a three before they it, do. Exactly. And why would anybody in that situation be saying we're going to lose? The presumption is if you're tied in overtime, we're going to win this game. There's no other conversation. And I am extraordinarily disappointed in uh, today's youth moving forward in America, in particular, privileged youth in America. The ones that have the ability to make a change, the ones that have the ability to get out there and do something, say something and be about something, they are running in the other direction because they're scared. And they're scared to take a punch. They're scared of conflict. They're scared of issues. They're they're scared of being cursed at, spit upon, whatever. But they don't understand. They get to be who they are because there was an entire generation of people before them all the way back into the Rosa Parks days and the dinosaurs who endured that. Those black people and those Jewish people, World War II, post-World War II, sacrificed not only for their cultural groups, for everybody. And so these like little pissy, privileged suburban kids don't understand that these other people made great sacrifices for them. Now, they enjoy wearing them on their T-shirts, but they don't want to get out there and stand for what they stood for. That's problematic to me. That's problematic. And, and we will know next week sometime right. what percentage of people under age 25 voted, but... They're going to be embarrassed. But they're, we know we know it's going to be a percentage that's that's lower than over seventy. They're crazy. I, I mean, and it's, the future is theirs. Yeah, it's theirs, and they don't even want it. They don't want it. What do they want? You know. And they are overwhelmingly. Uh, were they to vote, they'd be. Everyone knows demographically be, they ter- they'd be terrified. The right would be terrified if these kids yeah, were coming out yeah, to vote. If eighty percent of the under twenty five mm-hmm. voted. Yeah. Right. That, that's why the, the conservatives have to hurl the half charred carcasses of black men at people to scare them. You know, oh, these black men, they're all voting for Trump now. Come on. There's not enough black men to fucking swing the vote. It's, there's not. You know, um, let's get real here for a second. But of course, if Trump loses, it's the Jews' fault. He already made that clear, right? Well, I mean, he's, I'm dumb. He's like, Everybody knows that. The, well, it's the, always the Jews' fault. Why are they not Anytime voting? you do There's, lose, it's a Jew's if fault. If they had any brains at all, they'd be voting for me. That's, that's, you that's, know, he was saying you're not even a good Jew. Wow. And he's a terrible Christian. But he's a, he feels empowered to evaluate Jews. It is. That, and I think that, well, that's, that's the mood, right? The, the, sure. The cause of the mood is just trying to wrap our minds around the fact that, I mean, I guess kind of see it as thirds. One third is on our side. One right. third wants to vote for Trump and one third doesn't vote. And, They're morons. And, They're and crazy. Then, but, you know, but what's it going to take? They're going to have to be like, you know, yeah. uh, rounded up or given a star on their lapel or, or sent to a camp or like, or or quarantine to a ghetto to get the point. Like that's crazy. No idea. It's uh, like they just have this weird isolationist inside of isolationist belief system that somehow nothing's ever going to happen to them. And and I can't wrap my head around the fact that it appears fifty fifty, even though it's one third, one third, and then sure. one third staying home. But well, I just I I have a hard time understanding not being repulsed by. By Trump. I agree. Because, I, agree. I mean, even if, you know, I mean, I can like bend my mind a little and be open-minded and say, yeah, I could, uh, you know, I understand, you know, I could understand being pro-life and I can understand being pro-tariff. I can understand a lot of things, but I can't understand watching his, him give a speech and not going, 
You know, that guy, that guy, that's not my guy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I can't understand finding him appealing. Right. I, I could, I understand saying, I do know people who plan to vote for him. Like, I don't like him, but whatever, their identity is wrapped up in being Republican or something. So they're, they, they're like, I can't vote Democrat no matter what. I'm like, fine, that's, you know. Right, but you're voting for an idiot. You're voting for a loser. Yeah. You're voting yeah, but, for a but at least, But, I mean, I see people right. I don't know. Right. And, I, you know, a friend posts a picture of Trump dressed as a garbage man and saying, this guy's a hero. And then I see all the commenters. I love him so much. He's so amazing. I love him so much. And I'm like, God, I just want to say, I mean, why... Why? I'm just I just please explain to me like why you love him because it feels safe. It, it it puts them in a position or a situation where they feel like they will still be on top. There is you and I can't understand them because we've never lived in a world where we feel like we're on top. It's like you walk into a room and you say, Hi, my name is Jeff and I'm Jewish. That's a different outcome than if you say you don't bring it up at all and you just kind of skate your way through for as long as you can until they figure it out. Or you do something that is radically different from them. For me, I walk into a room and it's like, okay, are you a person of color who takes pride in themselves? who is, uh, stands up for their 5,000, 10,000 year history as a human being, or are you this knuckling, you know, contrite person who's this weird Tim Scott kind of guy, you know, who's just going to do whatever they want and they figure that out. And yeah, yeah it, you're implying that they, they just say to themselves, you either know your place. Yeah. Or we don't accept And you. now they re- reward you for knowing your place. There, were, You know, a generation ago, it was just like, oh, you're Jewish, you don't know your place, get out of here. Oh, you're black, you don't know your place, get out of here. Now, if you play the game, they're like, okay, here's something for you. We'll pretend like we'll like you. Oh, yeah, we support Israel. Or what, they'll say whatever they need to say to you to make it look good for them because they know that it is, it's self-reflective. They're getting something out of it now by playing ball with Jews and blacks that play ball with them. That's the difference now. But it isn't making the world a better place. The world's only a better place when everybody gets to be themselves. According to us. Yeah. And, you, and what you're explaining to me is according to these people I don't understand, right. Right. they feel like Trump is their hero because he's saying he maintains the status quo. All those people right. don't count. Right. I'm gonna I'm gonna send all the brown people back where they came sure. from. Twenty million, and you can feel like you're back in. This is your country. I'm giving it back to you. Right, even though it's not, and, and they stole it, they've stolen, never and it never was. And they just they want to create the illusion that this is a white country, and this is a Christian country, and it's not. It's a lie. And instead of trying to unpack the lie and get back to the truth, they want to keep piling on the lie. And they're comfortable with it. And they want they need us to play along with it. They need the Jews to play along with it. They need the blacks to play along with it. Because if we pull out of this, so much collapses in this society. You know, style, fashion, music, sports, you know, finance. That's all the stuff that okay. we everything. Have. everything. Everything just crumbles. <laughs> you, you know, and and even with, you know, uh, Latinos too, you know, if they mobilized against them as well, then there's a lot that goes away. We all need each other. We all need each other. And this delusion that they have that we have to sit in the back seat while they get to sit in the front seat and drive the train, that is so incredibly antiquated and so incredibly archaic and so incredibly mid 20th century, yeah, you know, and, and that's I, what they yeah. want. They want to, they want to knock us all the way back to that, the 1950s. They want us to stay parked in the Eisenhower era, you know, everything pre Kennedy where it is understood Good. that your income sure. will be lower than a white man's income. Even when you're doing the same job and, and you live, you live with and, it. And also a white, a white man's income mm-hmm. will be higher than a mm-hmm. white woman's income sure. if they're doing the same job. Right. All this, yeah. But it's right. basically like right. 
Yeah, it's exactly. The rules have been right. the, the so in their opinion, they've just been really upset for the last. Sure. Well, probably just since Obama won, they've been upset at well, the they, idea that people are equal to them. That it's real. Yeah. That, that, it, that, it, it's, that, that it, it It's it's hit. It's it's real. It's it's finally right. Happened. We've all known it or suspected it or it's been well, out we there. We talked about the melting about pot. It. Right. You know, Ali went to jail for it. You know what I mean? It's just like, you know, King got a, took a bullet for it. You know, Harvey Milk took a bullet for it. You know, there have been many people that have been hurt, injured, kicked to the side for it. But now they can't get rid of them. They can't. Go. I mean, the, the Kaepernick thing was just one of the things that set the whole thing off. You know, I mean, they took his career. They took his career. There's no question about it. And we still haven't unpacked that and still haven't talked about that. But they couldn't put the toothpaste back in the tube after that. They once they did that to Kaepernick, they completely and totally exposed themselves as full blown racists and fear mongers. Absolutely, that I. There hasn't been a documentary or anything yet about that. I don't think one that's any good. I don't think one that is profound. I don't think one that is really sort of indicting this four hundred year history of oppression that we have. I mean, the fact that this person could not even protest. We got a line. There's a line out there that says, here's where you can't do something. It's the same line that killed King. It's the same line that killed Emmett Till. You know, that's it's the same line that allowed America to turn its backs on Jews as they're being incinerated. There's a line. There's a line. We'll talk about it all the way up to this point, and then we're not going to talk about it anymore. You can't bring it up. Sorry. You know? And I, I, I find it culturally significant that right, Kaepernick was raised by a white family, right? He was adopted, he raised was by adopted. a white he family. He was biracial by birth biracial and then by birth. adopted by a white family. And at the end of the and, day, and he was, still— and, was, and his cultural and personal and familial education was, you are equal. To people absolutely and, the, and so when so he but they took that as a so, racial so he didn't assault. have the playbook they wanted him to have. exactly because they they created the system that this says he was going to go past his white this, and he's not he doesn't this want is to the be movie, that this is the movie i want made absolutely that goes and dives into his upbringing absolutely and, and all that right exactly and in spite of the things that he went through some of those things will be similar to what you went through and what i went through as well for being different and for being in a category that people don't necessarily understand. You know, you, me, and Kaepernick could probably go have a beer and identify with each other. That's what they don't want to happen. And even the creative artists and the filmmakers that try to, like, portray him, they still miss those points. And even if they are trying to hit them, at times, some of them don't have the acuity level to be able to navigate in that space to be able to get the point across in spite of the thick-headed nature of society. That's the filmmaker's job. If somebody is stupid, you have to be good enough as a filmmaker to make them smart. You know, how do you get somebody that lives in the mountains of Appalachia to love Mozart? As a musician, that's your job. Figure it out. Or change professions. You start small, yeah, and you win. Exactly. Yeah. E exactly. You know, that's what in, in spite of whatever, you know, John F. Kennedy and Robert F. Kennedy's shortcomings were in their personal lives. The one thing that they were really good at reaching people. You know, no, they, I mean, that's that's all the great successes understood how to, how, to, how to communicate. That's, 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 you got to learn how to you how to. And we don't know how to communicate anymore in this society, especially as filmmakers. You run a film festival, you see a ton of films. Come on. You know the difference. It's, it's, it's a cavernous gap between the filmmakers that submit to your festival. And you're like, wow, that filmmaker really knows how to communicate and connect with an audience and get a message. And then this other one, with all good intentions, it's just a, a, a hot mess and we can't screen it. You know? But that one that's the hot mess thinks that they're hot shit. And then that was the one that's probably going to get the deal because they know how to walk and talk and play the game and they know how to be contrite and they know how to knuckle. 
and, you know, who's ass to kiss. We're an ass kiss in society now. And that's the big ask that people are saying, like, on November 5th, please vote for ass kissing. And that's what these people, to answer your question about the Trump thing, I kiss this guy's ass, things are going to work out. If I kiss Vice President Harris's ass, I may not get what I want. That's their big fear, you know. And so they live in these mythologies of like, oh, she's not strong enough to be a leader. But Trump is Trump is the biggest coward I have ever seen in my life. He's a child. He's a child. He's no, a, he he's stands a, up to no, no one. No one. He's a petulant child. And to think that he that is the, stand up to his own followers, his followers in air quotes. You know, when he tried to tell them to take the vaccine, they he had to back off because even though he, you know, even though he wanted to brag about Operation Warp Speed. Was that what it was to yes, get this vaccine made? I can still remember that shit. When he said, he, I know. He, they, they yelled <laughs> at him. They booed him, right? Mm-hmm. They mm-hmm. booed him for saying, take the vaccine. Mm-hmm. So then he pushed out and instead, mm-hmm. of, instead of standing by his, his mm-hmm. principles. Yeah. You know who are the people I that get sick? A lot of people that get sick from COVID now are the ones that never took the vaccine. Yeah. Who it's knows? Crazy. Maybe we'll, I got no data, but I would not be shocked if long COVID is more common, too, if you're not vaccinated. Because, of, of course, you get a higher viral load. It would, it would, it would stand to reason, you know. If you believe in the sciencey stuff. Yeah, but you got to believe in the sciencey stuff, even though there are a lot of people who don't, but it's the sciencey stuff that allows us to live. That's why your toilet fucking flushes, <laughs> you know, because of the sciencey stuff. Do you, do you wonder where your turds go? Like, somebody's figured out the science... <laughs> Of disposing of your turds. I mean, and you're, 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 you're dangling a pretty big carrot in front of me because this is my, now my favorite subject. Turds? Of, well, no, just how important plumbing is to society. <laughs> like, the Romans fucking figured it out. Like, like indoor plumbing. But that was science. It's science. It's science. And engineering. And engineering. And... Engineering. and, it's, and, and it is the greatest miracle on earth. It saved us from killing ourselves because when we didn't have it, look what happened. We got the plague. Exactly. You die. Uh, the fact that like a 50-story building has toilets on every level that take human waste and send it somewhere safe, that is more amazing than the space program to me. Mm-hmm. But I love the space program. Don't Who get me wouldn't? wrong. wouldn't? Yeah, I think I, it's terrific. I adore, I adore my... I but there's it. been bias in the space program from the beginning. You know, the astronauts that originally scored the highest to be astronauts to go in the space were the women, not the men. They didn't go. They sent the men. The dumb men, the C minus guys, went into space. Test pilots. Yeah. Whatever. They, like, they you, just you know thought, what I mean? But that's the game we play. You know, they yeah. just gave a Medal of Honor to one of the black astronauts from back then that they never gave the opportunity to now. That's the game they play. That's the world we want to go back to. Because you know what they want? They want to like, hey, Fred, we'll give you, when you're 90, we'll give you a Medal of Honor because you were such a good guy for a long time. But you, you're not allowed to have an impact in society real time. And that includes you, too. How many Jews... Get to impact society real time. It's rare. We can start to count them on their hands. I mean, they gave Barbara Streisand a hard time for a long time, and she just sort of figured out a way to power through, you know? But it's, the list is short, you know, of anybody of non-traditional status that has been allowed to impact society in real time. But with all due respect to someone like George Clooney, that clown got a lot of opportunity very quickly and very early in his life. He got the benefit of the doubt. You know, so whatever. Brad Pitt, benefit of the doubt. Those guys were clowns when they were young. They weren't good actors. They were handsome guys. But that was about it. And they were allowed to get better and work it out. Quentin Tarantino was allowed to become a great filmmaker because everybody else helped him. You know? That's true. Older Italian guys watched out for him. And good for him. Good for him. Good for him. But, you know, for the rest of us, it's a battle. It's a struggle. You know, I mean, it took forever for Steven Spielberg to win an Oscar. You know, and that guy was like, his hair was on fire from, you know, the 70s through the 80s. And it wasn't until, you know, the 90s where they're like, okay, we got to give this guy Academy Awards. We have to acknowledge his talent. For sure. Well, you know, 
He had to make him a lot yeah, of money. Yeah. He had to make him a he lot him of, tons money. of money. money. But then he, you know, he dipped into the Holocaust well, right? Well, that's, he had to go. Well, he, well, yeah. I mean, you've got your well. <laughs> I've got mine, and that's the one they want us to be in because that's what. That's yeah, because that's that. Yeah, you can acknowledge us when. We're just dealing with our topic. They're t- and they're ready to deal. They weren't even ready to deal with the Holocaust until the 90s. You know? what? It wasn't something that was mass marketed, you know, until the 90s. Blackness wasn't mass marketed until the 90s in filmmaking. Blackness in music was. Now, Jews were a big part of the music industry, especially within the realm of black music. You know, and so I consider that heavy lift of black music, 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, that's a Jewish black thing. That's not a black thing. That's not a Jewish thing. That's a Jewish black thing. Let's be real about this. Have we even told that story? Fuck no. Half of Barry Gordy's staff at Motown was fucking Jews. That would be a better... That would be a better biopic than... Well, I, I saw the Barry Gordy musical that he produced yeah. uh, about how great a guy he was. He has to, because he... That's yeah, propaganda. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he's done some not-so-wonderful things. He lives in Newport Beach. Keep your voice down. But I, I want... Uh, <laughs> I also want to talk... I mean, you're bringing up, bringing up the, the connection between our communities and how, you know, I, want, I would love a documentary. I would love... More information about, uh, we had Mayor Tom Bradley here in Los Angeles sure. for, re- and, and that was solely, he was, he was our mayor because of the, the Jewish black cooperation, the, you know, Without collaboration, like just, exactly. just working together. Completely. And, and then those communities lost touch and now, you know. But I why would, did they lose love, touch? But, the, but I don't again, know. I mean, but that's the invest. That's another show. That's the investigative documentary. Was it the Reagan why, years I don't know. But, like, why, but why? Why all of a sudden did we wake up in a world where Jews and blacks don't like each other? I what happened? I don't know either. You know, I don't know. I and mean, were the Reagan years so tough on the black something, community? Something turned. And people, the middle class, got pushed mm-hmm. down, and and mm-hmm. and the Jews skated by and got to keep. You know, mm-hmm. getting more affluent is it is it socioeconomic? I don't know. I know that we moved into a white neighborhood when I was a little boy, and the other family in the neighborhood that was different were the Novaks. Yeah, and they were the Jews. They were two houses down from us, and we were the blacks. And that's how it went. And I remember the white people in the neighborhood would say, "Oh, those Jesus killers and all this other stuff." And then I'm sure when they were around the Novaks, they'd be, oh, those Mulians, whatever. You know, like that's how they play the game. Yeah, they was play that suburban both sides. Philly? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, even though the Novaks were a respectable family and so were we. Yeah. And they worked and they earned their way. But it wasn't good enough. But that's the world that they want to go back to, where no matter what we do, we're not good enough. You know, or as long as we acknowledge that they are superior sure. to us. Absolutely. It and really we don't is. push too hard or too long and we, you know, we kind of stay in our lane. So. Mm-hmm. I got uh, I got nowhere to go from there because this this is I mean, I guess. And all we need is for people to actually turn out next week. Or Absolutely. Or this weekend. Just show up. Just, just, just show turn up. turn out, because turnout's everything. Turnout is everything, and these young people need to show up, and for whatever reason, they're scared, and I don't get it. You know, and, you know, a big difference between our generation when we were younger and theirs is that people got in our faces. Now, in our generation, it was like, eh, you really shouldn't, you know, spank a kid or paddle a kid you know it was more we were moving towards the time out or talking to them or whatever but you know what they did they got in our face now i'm not saying that they put their hands on us but you thought they were going to put their hands on you when they when you got cornered doing something wrong you knew they were mad at you now these kids they deal with them by not even Acting like they are displeased with their behavior. 
They don't even make the kid feel a little bad about what they're doing. That's the, that part is messed up because even in my world, you know, when I have to deal with kids now, you know, because I'm a man of a certain age, I've got people that I work with me from time to time that can be in excess of 20 years younger than me. They think I'm mean. They think I'm a bully. I'm like, dude, you have no idea. You, you're not even close. This is not bullying. I am merely pointing out to you in a very serious tone the gravity of the situation that we're working in, what you have done wrong or the mistake that you have made and where you're going to have to fix it or in other instances where you just literally can't make the mistake. There are spaces and places in life where mistakes are not allowed. That's it. And I'm helping you moving forward. These kids are soft. They're so soft. And they're not going to make it. And a lot of conservatives and a lot of Republicans know it. That's why they call them snowflakes. And they push them around and punch them in the face and, you know, don't take them seriously. Because they know these kids aren't going to go vote. They know it. They know they can drive a wedge between blacks and Jews. They know they can drive a wedge between black men and black women. Oh, black men are voting for Trump. I don't know a single brother voting for Trump. I don't. I don't. I literally don't. And the dudes that I know that voted for Trump in 2016, they're not voting for him now because they feel dragged and shafted or whatever. Trump makes promises to everybody. He made promises to Melania. Do you think they came true? Not really. Amusingly, that is... That, is, that used to be the one feature of him that was comforting was that he accomplished nothing. Right. I mean, when he won in 2016, sure. he had promised to take away my health care on day one. He promised to do... Egg. The fact that he accomplished nothing was helpful, but this time around, we're all... But I was going to add to what you were saying, which is they found the most successful message for them is... The message that both sides are bad. They love to just say everybody lies. So Trump's lies are okay because everybody's lying. And it's like, no, honestly, Kamala is not lying at the same extent as Donald. Harris might have a, a perspective, but Harris's facts are not pulled out of her ass. Whereas Trump just likes to say, oh, I did everyone a favor with uh, the Supreme Court, because everyone wanted it to be a states issue anyway. Roe v. Wade was just needed to go to the states. And it's like, nobody was, the only people who wanted to go to the states were the people who wanted to overturn. Right. And you're just full of shit. Right. And now, you know. But the everybody's full of shit lie yeah. is very depressing, because I hear it, and I'm just like, how can you... This false equivalency is, sure. is too much. Full of shit floats on the insecurities of others. People that are afraid to call that and the, out and the, on and the And the carpet. desire to give up, right? Like yeah. the, young, the, the generation you're talking about that might stay home, even though they have the most reason to vote, is they just like to say, my vote doesn't matter. They, 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 they think whatever they got going on is just going to always be there. They think that the toilets are going to flush. They think there's going to be food at the grocery store. They think that the lights are going to stay on. They think that there's going to be an opportunity and a job for them out there. They think that their craft beer festival is going to keep happening every year. They're making horrible assumptions the same way the Romans did. That is the part that scares me. <laughs> and that's the part that scares me. And the, the people that are most reflective of the, this construct of the fall of Rome are these young people. It's these young people. Those are the people that I'm scared of. Those are the people that I think are dangerous. And it's not that they're going to do anything to me directly. They're going to do a lot to me indirectly by doing nothing. And, and uh, the proletariat. The, I, I, I did read a book about the fall of Rome. During COVID, SPQR, amazing sounds, book. Uh, I know, <laughs> that I know. sounds lovely. I'm, I'm just like <laughs> the biggest nerd. But the fall of Rome was all about the top 1% sure. getting so greedy that all, it was basically the military, right? Everyone, mm -hmm. almost everybody, all the men went to war, came back, and they were expecting a little bit of land, a little bit of money, 
enough to, you know, get married and have a kid and shit. Mm -hmm. And they had, they got nothing because those in the Senate decided all that mattered was their class. Sure. And that's why everyone turned to a dictator. Sometimes I wonder, maybe Caesar was like not that charismatic and not that great. Maybe he was more Trumpy than we know. And he was just the right rich prick at the right. Because somehow it just takes someone from the upper, upper of the upper of the upper of the upper class to somehow become a hero to the. Yeah. To the people that they have no respect for. That's that's an interesting theory. Um, And then we all know how it ends for Caesar. Et tu, Brutus. Um, So. That would have been if Mitch McConnell had finally, like, had let let him get him. Maybe. Or, you know, Brutus is J.D. Vance. That's not comforting. (laughs) It's not comforting. (laughs) It's not comforting <laughs> because um, in spite of uh, in spite of what he might have said five years ago, I kind of believe him. I kind of believe in his uh, extremism. I don't think he's faking it. No, I think JD's for real. But I don't, and I and I think that it's all a setup. And I think that he's throwing banana peels out there in front of Trump as well. JD's eyeballing his job. JD's not there to be vice president. That's my opinion. He's there to to push his agenda. He's got his own belief system in place. And you know how you can really tell? You measure a man by his significant other. His significant other looks like a stuffed animal. It says nothing. It does nothing. You know? And it is a crime that this is a woman of color as well. Because on one level... These conservatives want to say, oh, when it comes to that, you know, color doesn't matter. Color doesn't matter to them as long as you do what they say. Color matters to them if your particular position is in conflict with theirs. Then color matters. You know, I don't know how that woman deals with facing her own family. I don't know how that woman on a day-to-day basis deals with being a woman of color, having to face other people of color as well, and then raise her children and things like that. You know, and that's how I judge J. I judge JD by like, you know, his family. And that says a lot about him. And he's a clown. And he's a nobody. And the same thing with Trump, too. But then you look at someone like Obama, great family. You look at someone like Harris, great family. These are decent people. You know, the conservatives, they're willing to bet on an individual. And I don't see it that way. I see it as, you know, I'm betting on a person that is a part of the community. I'm betting on a person that loves more <laughs> than themselves. More than themselves. And, right. And hilariously, you're talking about solid, genuine family values Ironically, and isn't it? It's, it's, it's kind it's, of strange, it's so right? It's ironic yeah. that... But Buttigieg that the, has him, too. I think Buttigieg is a great family guy. Of course. Yeah, exactly. No, I, don't, I got no problem are. with him. And there are, there are examples on the other side, but Trump is the greatest example of no family values whatsoever. Exactly. I mean, they buried Nikki Haley. She's got good family values. One of her daughters is married to a black guy, too. I mean, but that didn't mean diddly to them. Well, they might have gone with her as VP if they'd known they were facing Harris, right? But it was when they thought Biden was just going to daughter his way to a loss they went with. Although, by the way, I want to add to what you were saying about JD. I have a very cynical, I think he's just Peter Thiel's puppet. I I just think he knows that there's a multi-billionaire who, if he does everything this guy tells him to, this guy will always make sure. He's taken care he's, of. He's he's in the top one percent. Sure. So who's the antichrist here? Is it Trump? Is it JD Vance? Is it someone behind a curtain somewhere? I think it's the conservative billionaires. I think it's so I it's think it's group. Musk and Teal so and the, right. Anti the antichrist is a uh, is a board of governors. Is what yeah. you're telling me? Yeah, an, an oligarch. It's not one dude. They're the oligarchs, oligarchs. They're and oligarchs. the oligarchs once again. And I just heard this actually on a podcast. I can't remember which one. <laughs> Not this Not one. Not this one, but but uh, but that about Putin and about right. the fact that 
the oligarchs backed him at first, and then he took one of them right after he had power, and he destroyed the guy's life to show everyone, I can destroy your lives if you ever challenge me. Because, of course, the only people who could challenge him is an, is an oligarch. And so these people who think Trump can be their little puppet, but they might have chosen better because Putin was a little too smart. Yeah, Trump can't do what Putin, Putin is smarter than oh. Trump. That's, that's not a that's a ridiculous comparison. Yeah, um, Trump is on the level of uh, useful the, the leader of well, you, yeah, like the the leader of North Korea. Yeah, yeah, they're uh, they're they're pretty son of privilege. Uh, yeah, whose exactly. only accomplishment Kim. is by birth. Yeah, they're bozos, and and they they bozos. spin their wheels and look embarrassing. Mm-hmm. Sure, and for some reason, just have embarrassing hair. Right. They could do Bing Crosby and uh, Bob Hope travel movies together. <laughs> but had they not been born, uh, whatever, right? Yeah, the, the, they started the 100-meter race at meter 92. And then they're ama- and then they're so proud of themselves. And then they're just the, habitual and they, they're liars. Like, and we and broke the tape. And, I broke yeah. the tape. Look how amazing I am. Yeah. I guess deep down, maybe... Uh, do you fall into the Trump knows he's a fraud thing and that's why he acts the way he I does? I think all frauds know they're frauds. That's why Hitler shot himself in the head, you know, they, and because they're afraid to face the reality of their fraudulent life choices. They're cowards, ultimately, you know. Very cowardly. Oh, completely cowardly. You know, it's why Marvin Gaye is dead. Marvin Gaye's father killed him because Marvin kept challenging him to face who he really is. As a hypocrite and a wife beater. And his dad killed him. You know, people like that have serious, you know, gosh, we can just go Napoleon and, and Idi Amin and, you know, these people, Henry the, Henry the Eighth, Henry the Fifth, Henry the Thirteenth, I don't know. All the Henrys. All the Henrys. Pick Gaddafi. your Henry. Gaddafi, pick your Henrys. Hussein. Yeah, exactly. Billy Martin, you know, the former New York Yankees manager. Same thing. I mean, it's just these, there are people that just do not want to deal with themselves. They don't want to deal with themselves. And they just spend their whole lives running from it. You know, and these people are narcissistic. They're borderlines. I mean, I, I know people like this. I have people in my family like this. I have people that I'm close to like this. People that I can't get out of my life. You know, and I have to figure out a way to manage it. And I've gone down every possible path in dealing with them, from yelling at them and screaming at them, jumping up and down, flipping tables in front of them, going nuts and crazy and batshit, and nothing changes. And you have to eventually get to the point where I, this person is a blockhead. They don't hear you. They can't get it. The problem is, is that these people work their way into power. And then there are people that are living off of them, so they're difficult to get out of the mix. They're difficult to eliminate. And back to your Caesar, you know, example or analogy, it took, was it 12 knives? It took 12 guys with knives to stab this guy to death to get rid of him? Yeah. Everybody's got to decide together. It's not a one-man band thing. We all got to decide together. And so... We are the ones with knives, and the knives is our vote. And that's why anybody that doesn't pick up a knife, I'm pissed at. Anybody that doesn't vote, I'm pissed at. Every day on my Facebook page, I put a reminder up to vote. Every day for, like, the past three weeks, all the way up to the um, election, I'm putting that up. And some days people are like, yeah, that's right, I'm going to vote. And then some days people don't say anything because they get weirded out by it. But I don't care. Whatever, you know, and, you know, I'm just trying to find it within myself to continue on and move forward and keep trying to make important films and saying that it's worth it. But if Trump wins, you know, he may say, okay, I'm going to shut down, you know, public television. I'm going to shut down public radio. I'm going to shut down the Sherman Oaks Film Festival because I don't like the films that it screens, you know, I'm gonna, they could they could dive into the tax code and take away uh, nonprofit status. Oh, for absolutely! Everybody. Oh, yeah. I, I think that they will. I, I think that that's a guarantee. 
DeSantis has already but started go that in Florida. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, sure. <laughs> DeSantis is already is is dismembering those types of organizations in Florida as, as, as well, and specific to film festivals. They were they were cutting their funding and stuff like that too. They don't want they don't want the message to get out there. They don't want people to know they have a choice. Yeah, they're furiously anti education. They don't want people to be Furiously anti information. Yeah, they yeah. literally want an ignorant populace, but it's worked. Yeah. That's that's the tragic now, part. Yeah. Because the amount of distraction has been increased. Look at all the football that's on now, everywhere. You know, there's well, just all of this other crap that is distracting us for the time being, temporarily. Well, and instead of know. Walter Cronkite every night sharing relatively accurate news. Right. They are allowed to live in their own little bubble where, look, I, I often tell myself, look, I can't be too mad at those people I see mm -hmm. because if all my information came from the sources that they they think are accurate, sure. they rely on, they are probably like, oh my God, I'm so afraid of this Harris person. Uh, she wants to, she wants to jail white people for yeah. being white. She wants to, she wants to, you know, I saw an ad, you know, I was, I was in Arizona last weekend. One, one luxury that one doesn't really get aware of, you have to, you have to leave California. If mm -hmm. you live in California, of course, you don't, but you come out here a lot. But of course, <laughs> you do. I do. And so, you went so, to high school. You know, I'm third here. generation California. Third generation California. So it's like. So went to a lot when, of malls. So there's means. no because California is kind of a done deal politically. Sure. There's no political advertising here, right? So no point. so all of a sudden, I'm in. I'm watching ES. I'm, I'm watching NBA in in an Airbnb in Scottsdale, Arizona last weekend, and it's one political ad after another. And and if I saw a Trump ad, and I was not an educated person, I would think. I would think he's the right choice because that ad is, is that ad was convincing. If you, if you were, if you had no data of your own to know what his policies would do to this country and what Harris's policies would do to this country, you would be like, wow, Harris is going to wreck this place. I better vote for the guy who will protect me. It, it was, it was a very effective ad when I saw. Sure. But at the same time too, they, Overlook the contradictions in that as well, because then they say, well, you know, I can bet on football now. <laughs> well, and they really are coming at it as, as, uh, oh, our dear friend, <laughs> Abortion's Kyrie bad, Irving, bad, you know, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever happened to Kyrie Irving that he, he came across websites about flat earth and he bought it <laughs> right. because he didn't have the the, the foundation, the educational foundation. Because to he left college it. after his freshman year. Yeah. Well, he played he, four games for Duke, I think, and then like jumped to the pros. But even in high school, no one told him to crack but, a book. But, well, yeah. No one in middle school told him to crack a no. book. Once that guy could dribble through his legs, and he had natural in fifth grade. intelligence that sought information, so he found a website and he came. came Convinced sure. the earth was flat. Because that's like, one of the things you can do as a black male. If you sound reasonably intelligent, you, you're good. No, that you're good. There's no like if if a, a white person sounds reasonably intelligent, they're like get the class. If a black person does, they're like, oh, do you play basketball? Are you good at sports or whatever? You sing, you dance, you do something else. As long as you appear to be reasonably socialized, that you're not going to go out there and murder people in the streets. You don't have to get educated. I've been saying this to people forever about black people because people are always just like, how come black people are like this or black guys are this? Because nobody's asked anything of them. No one demands anything of them. You know? And when people ask me why I'm the way that I am is because my mother and my grandmother demanded things of me. Like, I was not negotiable. And demanded education. Absolutely. And In addition to high character. And Lord knows I have too many friends in that position yeah. where... Where they get called, you're acting white because right. they're educated, and, it is and, and the fact true. that that is a that's that's a that's a hurt. It's, it's beyond it's, hurtful. It's, it's beyond. It's 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 dehumanizing. 
It is dehumanizing to sit there and to say to a black person, in particular a black male, that is trying to be the best person they possibly can be and to call them white is an insult to him, his race, his culture, and white people too. It's a you know, horrible it's, it's insult a horror, to black and, culture because it, it, it's saying it, it, that you sounding intelligent should, because Because it's saying that we down. don't want blacks to be intelligent. That's the point. We don't want, we, it's obvious, we don't want blacks to be intelligent. People, I upset people with my mere presence. And I know that if Trump wins on Tuesday, I have increased my level of conflict exponentially, and it's put it into the lethal category in the wrong situation. There are people I know I make their blood boil because I can carry myself in a certain way, and I speak, and I walk, and I talk in a certain way. And it just makes them insane. Because you know something? They'll never be as smart as me. And they're mad. And they're like, why does that guy with dark skin get to be smarter than me? And I don't get to be smarter than them. I worked at it. You earned it. I earned it. And my family earned it. And my grandparents and everybody else. And the people in my community earned it. That's how they feel about it. Kamala that's like, Harris, too, right? Exactly. And she, she is the daughter of immigrants. And she is the daughter of two people that didn't have much. She is a great American story, as great as Abraham Lincoln. But when you have those same characteristics as a black person or a person of color or a woman, they don't want it. They don't care. This is why I have a problem with young people, because those young people, they want to be friends with those people. Oh, calm is cool. Or God, like, friend, whatever. They want, to, they want to hang out with them. They want to date them. They want to have sex with them. They think it's cool. They want to copy them and do their dances and all sorts of stuff. When it's time to vote for them, they won't do it. They're bullshit, too. They don't give a shit. You know, you're not cool because you're 21 years old and you're not voting, but your girlfriend's black. You're more obligated to fucking vote, in my opinion. Get out of here. You know, this is absolutely crazy. It is just total lunacy. And a lot of this I put on the shoulders of young people. And I'm comfortable with that. And I will fight them in the streets on it. And I'm not afraid of them. Like, I'm just, I'm not going to play this game with young people that they're better than me because they're younger than me and they navigate the internet better than me. Because at the bottom line, when I'm out there and I'm making films and I'm doing stuff, you know who's the caboose? The young people. When it's time to go to work, when it's time to go film and it's time to go do something or shoot a Black Lives Matter rally or shoot a Trump rally or go do an interview and in the inner city and stuff like that, young people, they're the ones that are like the albatross around everybody's neck. They're the whiners. They're the ones that are waiting for lunch. They're the ones that don't want to work hard. They're the ones that want to go home. They're the ones that just want to do just enough to get by. They don't want to do the hard stuff. They're the ones that whine. And they think they're okay. You know what they care about? Looking pretty. You know what they care about? Their selfies. You know what they think about? Their social media. Oh, social media. Should they get a nose job or not? Like all this other crap. So this this is... uh this is the staffing. This is this is this is uh, this is the the young generation yeah. that that wants to work in media, right? And come they want and they think they're going to take it over. And when they give you an interview or whatever, they yeah. they, they they get in. They're both, and then you get to know the truth. Oh, exactly. I mean, they, they tell me all the time. You know, we're the, we're what's next. We're going to save this industry. We're going to take Hollywood to the next level. I'm like, no, you're not. You can't even take out the garbage in Hollywood. You're never going to get this. And if you it's think you're woke, happen. and for them, woke is a positive, right? Yeah, but to but, them, but, woke, but, woke is like just hanging out. Yeah, woke, but they woke. think they're woke, yeah, if they, they get their pronouns better than us, maybe. Sure. But, but as you're pointing out, voting, you can't be woke if you don't vote. Absolutely. There, end because, of story. Because you're, you're not... You're, you're showing a lack of awareness. Yeah, no vote, no woke. Like, it's, it's it. They go together. And you know who said that? Thurgood Marshall. Do they know who that guy is? No. That's the point. And that's where the word woke came from in the first place. He coined it. We are the great woke nation. That's what he said after World War II. As Jackie Robinson's, you know, sliding into second base. You know, and Rosa Parks is refusing to give up her seat on the bus. You know? 
Mm-hmm. And Martin Luther King is like sparkly at press conferences, you know, the great woke generation. Here comes John F. Kennedy, you know, the, the senator from New York or Massachusetts. Yeah. You know, that was a great time. That was when young people did something. These young people not don't do anything. And not all of them, not indicting all of them, obviously. But there is enough that there is an argument for this to be like, wait a minute, you guys need to, like, you know, check yourselves before you wreck yourselves, which is an old For sure. And, 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 uh, and you know, we're talking about voter turnout. So sure. voter turnout on average is going to be about 66%, right? About yeah, two thirds. young people were coming and, out. And in young drugs. people, it's going to be. Fifty percent or less. Exactly, and it's crazy. They should be like at seventy-five, and 80. it's eighty percent if you're over sixty-five or something. Exactly, and they should. The young people should be leading this charge. They shouldn't even have the vote. Actually, if you're over sixty-five, I'm it's almost in favor of you not voting exactly. because because you'll vote for your self-interest, but your self-interest don't matter. You got twenty years ago versus sixty years ago. I mean, people are people assume- used to vote the right. The over 65 used to care about what the next generation sure. would experience. But, but less and less and less and less, you know. That's, uh... Right. I mean, my grandmother's generation, they gave up their lives for us. You know, my, my grandmother Same walked here. out of the cotton fields of Memphis, Tennessee for me. And you know how I know that? She told me to my face, I'm going to get out of here and I'm going to get educated so my grandchildren will never see a cotton field. My great grand- grandparents ran out of Ukraine they, and Latvia exactly. to get here. It's exactly. So and what that if they the people, didn't? So that a few generations right. later, people could live. But, but what well. if they were like, fuck it? And there, I'm sure there were people, there, there were black people that sat in them fields and said, fuck it. And there are people that back in the Ukraine that said, fuck it. Those generations don't get to go to the next level. We're blessed. Unbelievable. And these stupid ass young people don't see that. Somebody did something to get them to where they are, so they owe that to somebody else moving forward. They're cr- they're crazy. They're lunatics, and they're lazy, and at times they're just degenerate to a fault, and they complain about everything, so you know, and they don't do anything. So who's their hero? themselves right it's not or even, some celebrity yeah i mean i know it's not really taylor or someone swift. that doesn't exist it kind of is taylor swift from time to time kind of is but she's <clears throat> kind of inspiring she i, she, I get she took a stand. sure I, I i get it like why did that turn the I, tide I, I don't know by the way i was going to share uh, a long time ago when i was tapping on my i just wanted to say that mm-hmm. the last time we sat down with the microphones and yeah. chatted about this mm-hmm. was july 18th which i believe was soon after the Biden Harris switch. Yes. And we were filled with optimism at that time. And the reason <laughs> why our optimism went away is since in those three months since, three and a half months since. Taylor Swift went on tour. Taylor Swift. I, I didn't go see her. But but we watched the margin never improve. Mm-hmm. Like Harris pulled ahead of Trump by one and a half, two percent mm-hmm. nationwide, and it's stuck there. But how and much can I we really, really believe thought, it anymore? You know, I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I like know. I'm this like you know. Look, I, I would love. We're gonna find out. I would love for you know if five percent more of under thirty votes than expected, and that'd be great. If five percent more of of people of color or or Republican women who actually kind of care about their uterus, right. Or their daughter's uterus, right. and they won't tell I, their I, husband I, who yeah, they're voting yeah, for. Yeah, no, I, I, like, I believe like, all women care about their uterus. I just think that unfortunately there is a large number of women who are afraid of men. Yeah, you know, and I think that most black people have black pride, but there is a small percentage of black people who are afraid of white men. And or I do have a few friends. Who even during the Obama era were like, he's not doing enough for me. He's not doing enough for us. Because, you know, black unemployment didn't maybe didn't improve enough under Obama. But what was he supposed to do? He's running the whole fucking it's country. Camouflage. They are camouflaging the fact that they're fucking lazy. 
They're camouflaging the fact that this guy is creating a window of opportunity for you to be able to do something. He's like, here's the ball. You still got to score. They're mad that he's not scoring for them. Right. They're mad that he didn't give them a ladder to walk right. up. Right. He dunk. passes the ball to him to them, and instead of them taking the shot, they pass it back to him. And they're like, you take the shot. That's insane. Like, I, I find that to be unbelievably insulting, you know, because they're yeah. going to find out what it's like without an Obama type or an Obama sensibility in the office. When they're trying to do stuff and people are blocking them left and right, they're going to see what real oppression is. Well, it was obvious for four years what was going on. Yeah. I mean, it was a very rough time. And then COVID hit. And that, uh, what can I do? We would be in chains now if COVID had never hit. Because I think that Trump would have won a second term. I, Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I see. I, I I see. COVID robbed him of that second term because it showed his level of incompetence. At the in the moment, everyone was like, "Yeah, he's he's." Well, yeah, he, he, he somehow everyone's forgetting how badly he right, and and I don't left. and I don't understand how that happened. I don't I don't get that. And to the GOP's credit, they figured out a way to scrub that. That that's never come up, his level of incompetence. But, you know, if COVID had not happened, you know, I, I think that he was probably well on his way to winning in 2020 as well. You know, if George Floyd doesn't get murdered, you know, there's all of these things that, you know, could have turned the tide in a different direction. Yeah. Well, we definitely can't. We can't know. We can't know for sure. You know, and I'm glad that that he did not win in 2020, and I'm glad that Biden won in 2020, and I'm glad that Biden stepped down, and I'm glad that Michelle Obama did not run for president the way that all of these, like, again, hyper-progressive, you know, willy-nilly people wanted, because they, again, they want someone to score for them. They're like, oh, well, she can just do it all. And I think she inherently said, I'm not doing that for everybody. I'm still a relatively young person. I still have my daughters. I've got a life. And she's not, I, that, that whole thing drove me mad because she never expressed interest in being a politician on her own. I understand that. And that, but a lot of people really wanted her and to be. And the image of recruiting her, honestly, rem, it was reminiscent of pulling Hillary in and stacking the deck in her favor sure. in the primaries. And Hillary shouldn't have been there. You know, I, I I think that I would have been more interested in rolling the dice with Bernie. And I believe that Bernie would have beaten Trump in 2016. Probably. Yeah. Uh, uh, there was there was a there's there is a bench, right? There's a deep, fairly decent bench of and there's Democratic governors. There's all kinds of people that. Yeah. Hillary was a poor choice. I mean, Trump Hillary had been in politics lucky. for 30 years anyway. It was like, you know, she's she's impacted world history. But she was a slight. But she's a carpetbagger. You know what I be mean? Be that like, as like it there may. Was an ins- there was just- an instant. I mean, and she- I, by the way, I would have been, I would have voted for her a million times against Trump. But you wouldn't. I get it. But-, but, but she was a particularly weak candidate in what is a popularity contest. She's a naturally less easy to like human. That's just her, that's that's her just style. Who she is. But the, and, and that's unfair. But that's how shitty we treat women. That is how shitty. You we know, treat. women have to be like sparkly and wonderful and bake you bread in order for us to like them. But there's a reason why Gavin Newsom has a shot to be president someday and Adam Schiff doesn't. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it, it, it's about charm and likability. It, it, charm and likability and are appearance. a big deal for every, and, and all of that. All yeah. of that. You know, and then she was married to Bill Clinton. And she's a former first lady. I mean, those are things that chop you down because I I think, you know, people are like, "Eh, that's not really how this works. You know, we need new people, new blood. And And I believe in new people, new blood all the time. That is my number one reason why Trump should go in my argument with GOP people. Like I have now with sane people, I've got a ton of reasons. But when I'm arguing with conservatives, I'm like, he's already been president. What the hell? Move on. Yeah. Find somebody else. And he lost for you four it, years ago. Exactly. And it's when obvi- Romney lost for you, you decided you're done with him. Exactly. But how come with him you're not? What's the deal? And then you don't have anybody coming behind him now. And then, you, uh, it's, you know, this J.D. Vance who's because like— Because he manages to turn it into a cult of personality. Exactly. And he wants to be the ruler for life and he wants to change the voting laws and all this other stuff and, you know, and be the protector of women. What the hell does that mean? 
That's disgusting. It is one of the... F- I mean, it would be funny if he loses. We, then we can laugh about the fact there's almost nothing funnier to me than I'll protect women if, even if they don't want me to. Didn't he say something like that? Wasn't yes. it along those lines? Like, even if they don't want me to, I'm going to do what's best for them. Like, it sounds like assault. He, but- he has assault. Assaulting women is just in his core. It's his jam. It is his jam because his whole life, you know, I wasn't lucky enough. My, my, you know, my, my, nobody ended up handing me a billion dollar real estate empire so that I could, you know, starting at age 15, pay anyone I want to do whatever I want, you know, sexually. Must turn you into a really horrible person. I think so. Yeah. There's a, maybe there might be a few decent, Remember, oh my God, you might have, there was a documentary called Born Rich, like 15, mm. 20 years ago. I think it was on HBO. It actually had a few of the Trump kids, mm-hmm. some Vanderbilt kids, this and that. Oh, yeah. And, but it really shared just how fucked up this top 0.01%. If, if, if you are born to a billionaire, you have very little shot of being of of having a decent life. Somehow, I guess Warren Buffett did it. Bill Gates, apparently, his kids are, you know. But that's because these were people who said, "By the way, uh, wasn't it Buffett who said something like, my kids will be comfortable, but they've, but not so much that they can't work. Like they have to work. They have to do something with their lives." Yeah. Anyway, total total tangent there. But no, I I, I think that's a big part of what we're voting on. We have to do something with our lives, and voting is one of those things, and a lot of people are skirting that because they don't they think they have so much privilege. Voting doesn't matter. It's not true. But we are uh, not like one of the parties would allow it, but other democracies, it's a national holiday voting day. No one has to go to work. Because we, we want be, everyone to vote. Because we don't want we, we, the uh, black we have, and brown people and the gays to go vote. We want to make sure they have to go to work. Yes, yes. If you're, we, we're, if they're going to do whatever we, we can to make sure they don't show up at the polls. Yes, if you're, they only want whites to vote in this culture. They only want white males to vote in this culture. They only want white Christian males to vote in this culture. Let's be real. That's the truth. Heterosexual white oh. Christian males. To vote. That's it. Yeah. And or, but, but whatever. Sometimes, sometimes, uh, Mr. Mr. Orange head literally just, whatever. He doesn't care what you look like. I, I kind of believe him. If you vote for him, you're good. If that's you don't right. vote oh, for yeah. him, you're I bad. Mean, th- that's the devil. I mean, of course, if you worship him, then he's cool with you. Yeah. You know, but it, then if you don't, then whatever you have that's different, they're going to use it against you. Yeah, and demographically, they can look and say, right. okay, uh, we're Texas, so if, if you college kids have a mailbox, not a mailing address, so if you live in a dorm, you don't get to vote. We're going to say you have to have a mailing address, not a mailbox. Sure. Because on average, they're not going to vote for me. Yeah. Right. And so Us. that's what they do. But if he thought that they were, then he would give them every accommodation possible to be able to vote. It's rigged. It's rigged. Which is what he claims. And they the believe that, like, we will never stand up to it. We will never protest. We will never refuse to give up our seat on the bus. They think that we're I cowards. I have to admit, the line of voters unwilling to go home in Georgia, like when they showed footage last year's election, two mm-hmm. years ago during the midterms, mm-hmm. Those voters refusing, you know, even though they made it illegal to even hand them water and mm-hmm. whatnot. Like, yeah, and that's ridiculous. Again. Their, their yeah. refusal to to go home, mm-hmm. their dedication to vote. It was, it was, uh, it can make you cry. They were not letting themselves be bullied out of voting. Right. So inspiring. Right. It's going to happen again? Absolutely. You know how many black people there are in Georgia? Are you kidding me? Enough to enough, enough that enough Stacey enough. Abrams should be, but but enough that it went to yeah, like four years like, ago went people, to Biden. But again, like people think these crackers, these racist white people, think that black people are scared of them. They really do. 
They really do. And they think they're not smart enough to be able to navigate the system. They're wrong. They're wrong. And they're going to find out the hard way. I know. And they want to they, they test people. They want to they test people all the time. You know, and they're going to find out what black people are really made of. And we are more than just, you know, sports people and music people and singers and dancers and, you know, and clean your house people. We got a lot more going on and they're going to find that out the hard way. And, you know, the vast majority of us are not afraid of them. You know, and good luck with that white racist person (laughs) and is the lack of fear do you think it's just because it's just been proven the last our generation's experience shows that like kissing ass to the power structure doesn't work anyway so so what no need to no need to exactly yeah Yeah, that's really what it is but in from their vantage point they think in this past generation kissing ass gets you where you want to go you know they the secret to my success You know, the Alex P. Keaton generation, you know, they think kissing ass does something for you. That's why Trump is so popular, you know, but that's not reality. That's not truth. That's an aberration. He's also is. I mean, I might I'm oversimplifying, but sometimes I think his popularity is based solely on his skill as a troll. Like he's he's his trolling skills are incredible. He's really, really good at being a troll. And they really, really hate. There's there's intense hate towards people of color. But, you know, I mean, they've used the trans community in such a cruel way. Like a doormat. They, they, I, and and, they, and they, they've, they've convinced. They've convinced one third of the country that. Like every every woman's sport, they don't care about women's sports, but they they've convinced that this is a threat to the fiber of our nation. And the truth is, they're less than one percent. They're nothing. It's point like oh two percent. Yeah, it's like it's crazy. It's, it's crazy. And, and we just say they have a right to live, to be who to, they are, to, to be who they are, and exist. And we're crushing them. How? What was it like? The number of Jews in Germany was it two percent, four percent, something like that? Something super low. You know, black people have only been fourteen percent here. They always punch down. They punch down on people. And trans people are the people that are there right now that they punch down on. To the point where transgendered people are afraid to take a stand. Transgendered people are like, oh, I want to blend. I want to hide. I don't want anybody to know. I don't want to like, you know, and they can't do that. That's what they've done. They're, hurt. they're creating a discourse for transgendered people to hurt themselves because that's what they want. Just like they want Jews to hurt themselves, you know, through self-loathing and they want blacks to hurt themselves through self-loathing and all of these other minority groups. It's the same thing that they set you up for failure. And until we have the Martin Luther King of transgendered people come along and mobilize them, it's going to be really challenging well, it's such a tiny population. How do you I, know that? for now? I but mean, also, at least, but, but also, they, but also, but they've small. convinced a third of the country that these human beings are are a threat to their very existence. And it's insane. But they also said that about I got gays. Mormon. I got Mormon in laws who okay. were going on and on about. I got. It's black not friends. safe to go to Target. I, I know. It's I, not I, safe to go to Target. There's a man in the women's room. I, I I get it. I got black. I got black friends that don't talk to me anymore because I worked uh, for several years on a transgendered project. You know. And it creeps them out too much. Completely. It makes them question my own sexuality. Or my own orientation, which is, number one, none of their goddamn business. But for whatever reasons, we have to constantly, in this society, have that on display. Why is that such an incredible identifier for us? I don't know. I don't understand why we're so insecure about our sexuality and our sexual orientation and that we've politicized it to a point that it cripples us from being able to keep everyone safe. I've never understood it. I, I wish I wish I could. I, I, I really never understood right. Some of why them, what someone else does in right. their bedroom, it, what has it got to do with me? Nothing. Some of the most dysfunctional, hedonistic, hateful sexual, aberrant people I've ever met in my life are heterosexual. Oh, sure. That are sick. 
that are that are sick, well, need help, yeah. and have real issues, and they harm and they hurt people, and they exploit people, and hurt themselves, and hurt themselves. But those people are okay. That's acceptable behavior. That's okay. That's all right. That's not a that's not a threat. There are more twisted, effed up heterosexuals that are damaging our society than there ever will be trans or gay. Period. If you run the numbers. Absolutely. I mean, like, you know, we don't we don't do anything about like the pornography industry. You know, we don't you know, there's no there's no regulations on it. You know what I mean? I'm not saying the pornography industry shouldn't exist, but you shouldn't be able to pick up your fucking device and put in one URL and get you all the porn they want. It should be behind some reasonable firewall that there is a series of locks to get there based on whose phone that is, who owns that phone, what age you are, all this other stuff. It's too easy. It's too easy to get to porn. You know, it's funny because that's you are you brought that up, and that's something that always concerned me. But we don't do is, anything about is, it. Is is uh, I mean, I've actually said to nieces and nephews, I, I I'll be like, look, I know you don't want to discuss this with me because I'm your uncle, but like, has it fucked everything up? The amount of porn that's been available since since you were old enough to get online, and my nieces tell me that. All the guys their age, guys under 20, 25 and under, don't know how to treat a woman. And I and I and I say, there's got to be nice guys. That's that's what I say at first. That's but an old I think, man thing. But I know, but I think in the back of my head, if they've grown up with unlimited porn, of course they don't know how to treat another person or another human being. Absolutely, there now are people, young people, that they only interact sexually with anime porn. Not even real people. That's going away. Are we doing anything about it? No. Why? Because it's a multi-billion dollar industry. Just like people get concussed, you know, the quarterback for the Miami Dolphins could die tomorrow, but it's a multi-billion dollar, trillion dollar industry, so game on. Things that make money, they refuse to regulate. And then the things that they don't make money on that require the give back in the spirit of society, they want to get rid of. Like getting people off the streets that are homeless, you know. I can say something I'm proud of in my hometown that I know, I don't know if I told you, but I hire an unhoused person to do video editing for me. Yep. The city of L.A. just got her permanent housing they they bought a rundown hotel fixed it up Mm -hmm. and they actually are moving her from her rv into she's gonna have a roof over her head and if that doesn't sound like a big deal i mean let's let me point out that she lived in a part of the san fernando valley that is very hot and when it's over 100 degrees and you live in an rv it's it's it's, dangerous it's yeah so dangerous so I'm so happy that housing I, – I, I voted for our current mayor because she said housing first, and I, it's happening. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy about one little thing. <laughs> and that's good. And, and that, that's, that's one little thing and one and little, little, shy and little of light. step in the right direction. But it, it does – I'm just going to confess, but you've heard me say this before, uh, that – you know, I'm proud of my home state and hometown and, and say to myself, well, I guess if things go bad, we'll just secede. <laughs> like deep down, we're like, oh, all we got to do is like just run a bill through through the state Senate and, and House and then have our governor sign it that says California law supersedes federal law. Fine. We're back to where we were. Right. You guys can do whatever you want. You know you want our tax dollars, so you can't fuck with us. But needless to say, like, if Trump had a second term, and if California said, you know, we want out, he'd probably say, you and all your electoral college votes can leave. Sure. But doesn't help anybody else. No. But no. I, feel, I feel kind of safer here. You should. Doesn't California have a standing army, too? 
I think right? They the, 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 the mm. reserves or, no, what they, is it? The, uh, I think they do. I mean, I think they do. Enough. Yeah. It might have, there might be a conflict over federal versus state control mm. of it, but deep down, let's just say I'm pretty sure that the entire re- Republican machine would be happy if California was no longer part of the USA. And New York. And New York, yeah. If they could get rid of those two, they'd never lose another. But then again, I was the idiot walking around four years ago going, we just need a million Democrats to, to move to Texas. Just, just get it done in two years. Just start moving. Like I wanted George Soros to offer people $100,000 to move because then add Texas, make, te- make Texas blue, and it's over. I know. It's over before it starts, you know? But then they'd have to live in Texas where the, the power grid doesn't even work. <laughs> it's a lot of things in Texas that A lot don't of things work. in Texas don't work. Yeah. Common sense. <laughs> I know there's little, you know, just there's there's good people everywhere. There is. And, and I don't want people to think that I don't know that or believe that. But there is also people of questionable integrity everywhere um, as, as well. And I'm not going to kid myself about that either. And I'm not giving anybody a pass as well. So they got to live with that part too. And isn't it, uh, and we believe in democracy, which puts you in a bind if, if the majority of the public is misinformed? Yeah. Or ignorant, like or following like, a fascist. Like I, I do believe in democracy. I completely do, but I hate it when believing in democracy, people misinterpret you as being a socialist. You know, that's what's crazy too. You know, like all of why are those two things becoming so blurred with the conservative right? Well, there. I mean, this goes back many years, but. When we go back to the tiki torches, which I love it when you come here, this is you like when I go to that one. Yeah, well, exactly. because because I tried our that was back when I still had some friends who I've gotten rid of, mm-hmm. and I would say to those friends, "Wait a minute, this is a democ- this is democracy in action. The local city council voted by the local community; they're the ones who decided to take down that statue." It's their choice. This is democracy. It wasn't like, you know, woke liberals forcing a deeply clan-oriented town to take down a Confederate statue. It was a local community decided, we're going to get rid of that statue. It's our choice. It's our park. And then they fucking said that they, you have no right to do this. And it's like they stopped believing in democracy as soon as they disagree with the public. Yeah, I mean, but they didn't think that Colin Kaepernick had the right to protest, you know, either. Yeah, and as if, if one guy kneeling. One guy. And by the way, I was the guy saying, how is kneeling that disrespectful? It's not at all. It's not at all. It's disrespectful because a black man did it. And that's yeah. what, and there's, people have an expectation of black men that is ridiculous. Just like Muhammad Ali got in trouble because he did not want to go fight in a war because of his religious beliefs, which is something you are allowed to do, but they would not let him do it because he was a cash cow for them. Well, these are the same motherfuckers who refused to use the name Muhammad Ali, right? They, exactly. They, well, they kept calling him Cassius Clay, it, it, yeah, so like, it, like they tried to call Kareem Lewell Cinder. Exactly. They, they play this game all the time. It's, yeah. it's, it's constant. You know, it's constant. They want to marginalize you, you know, and they want to tell you that, oh, things are okay. You guys have enough opportunity out there. It's okay for you guys. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. No, we're not. We're a long way from that. And there are a lot of other people that are a long way from that, too. And a lot of other women and a lot of other trans people and a lot of other people that are gay as well. We're a long way from there. Just a few people have crossed that threshold or that finish line. And of those that have, not many of them reach back and help others. Yeah, that is another. I wonder if I was about to talk about culture and and 
you know, I believe in a multicultural society because I grew up in one here in L.A. Yeah. But I some I guess it is just prejudice and racism is why people, the people who, as soon as I get into the party, I want the door to close behind me because the people outside the door are others to me. I mean, isn't the whole point when you get in to help lift up others too? I That's what we were taught to do. Yeah, is, but not anymore. Not when it comes to conservatives. You're only holding the door for other people that think like you, walk like you, talk like you, and hopefully look like you. Or that are willing to knuckle to you. The rules have changed. Or maybe they weren't ever any different. We just didn't realize it because we were so far down. Yeah. You know? Yeah, no, they, I, yeah, yeah, the, I, I, yeah, the rules haven't changed. It's just the, we're getting the rules used to, to work their way. Exactly. And it doesn't work and their way anymore. And now we've sort of changed the rules and, right. and we've tried to make this country live up to its constitution. Sure. Right. And they find that repugnant. Because sure. they're like, wait, you're taking away my unfair advantage? That's unfair. My unfair advantage must remain. It's unfair to take away my unfair advantage. It's like the world's worst catch-22. Because that is... And, you know, they get all mad at us for saying, making everything about prejudice and race and, and you know, rights, human rights. Is human rights a good enough a blanket term of what they're against? And, you know, I have had conservatives look me in the eyes and say, why do you always bring up the abortion thing? Why do you always bring up the, you know, LGBTQ thing and the, the, you know, racism thing? Why? And I'm like, look, all conservatives aren't racist, but all racists are conservative. (laughs) You know, I mean, in the end. If you're not ra- if you're if you are racist, you only have one choice. Like if you truly believe in the myth of skin color, if you really don't r- acknowledge that race has only existed for like ten thousand years or something, like, it's just it's just a temporary condition. Everyone came from the same place, and we're all cousins. I think it's like twelfth cousins. Every every human being on Earth is a twelfth cousin. I don't know. We have a lot to work out. And um, time's a wasting. TikTok, bitches. And we can't keep just punting all the time. Last time, did we talk about the evils of TikTok with the algorithmic amplification of anti-democratic pro-authoritarianism? Yes, you have brought that up. Okay, yeah. It it angers you. That, uh, it's just scary. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's really scary that, and that's another problem with the young people. They get get all their news on on the TikTok, and it's biased by design. Yeah. And amusingly, Trump and Biden both agreed that TikTok should be... (laughs) <laughs> has to be sold for it to be available in this country, and neither of them got it done. So it was something that they agree on. That the that. Chinese government should not be controlling what people under 25 see and learn. And that one's tough. Yeah. I mean, the, the Chinese want us to injure ourselves. They want us to stumble under our own weight. They want us to not be a shining example that makes their middle class want, want democracy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And they want they want to be the superpower. They want they they want that position. Man, when I was in college, Tiananmen Square, it was like, oh my god, it's gonna happen. They're gonna get democracy. Look what the people are doing. Uh, uh, not even close. Nope. Further away than ever. You know. She literally. XI, she <laughs> literally changed the constitution so that he never has to step down. It's what Trump wants to do if he wins again. That's what he's totally gonna do. Maybe. And he's gonna he's gonna push the Palestinians into the ocean. And he's gonna hand the Ukraine to Putin. He's gonna and and more, because Putin won't stop there. 
Oh, absolutely. But Trump is too stupid to know that. Well, I still lean on the conspiracy theory that, you know, that Deutsche Bank or whichever bank has Trump's $3 billion in debt, I think it was his debt's co-sponsored by Putin. It's a couple billions, nothing to Putin. Putin has like a couple hundred billion or something from being an, from robbing all the oligarchs. So I think he owns Trump's debt and just says to him, hey, I'll keep financing your debt if you do what I want. Very simple math for Trump. He's like, okay, good deal. Good deal. And then somehow my conservative friends are like, I'm not sure that Harris can take on Putin. And I'm like, and I admit I get rude. And I say, mm. wouldn't you rather she uh, take on Putin instead of Trump just get under the desk and give Putin a blowjob? Like, I go there because I'm like, that's literally what Trump does for him. That's figuratively what Trump does. Trump does whatever Putin asks. Sure. This is lackey. He really is. And apparently... It's not even controversial to learn that they've been in touch several times in the last year, as inappropriate as that is. Yes, we found out that norms don't norms are useless. Totally. Can't live by norms. Nope. So uh the Dodgers won. <laughs> they did. They <laughs> Although you're not wearing a Dodger hat. I'm not, and I've been thinking about. It. I feel like I should go purchase one. Um, the uh, the the big uh, parade rally thing was today, which I thought was wonderful at the stadium. Um, I'm happy the Dodgers won. Um, anytime the Yankees lose, I'm kind of for it. They won a lot. Yankees have won so much, and then once you really look at like the number of times the Dodgers have won, it was 55, 81. Um, and then they won like five years ago, I think. Something. Yeah, they got the COVID one. Yeah. They got the COVID the, one. The that, bubble. That's it, yeah, but that's the asterisk. That, but that's it. I mean, they the Dodgers have lost a lot of World Series. When I was a kid, we kept losing to the Yankees. Yeah, I remember that. Reggie was too he, damn good. He was. I'm sure um, there's more. And names then they lost in this. They lost in the '60s as as well. And then they just got their their brains beat in in the uh, '40s and early. Um, in the early 1950s uh, as well. So I think it's great when but the they Dodgers were uh, always a. They're I mean, they're a great organization. There's something about the franchise sure. and the culture of it. Yeah, from you mentioned Jackie Robinson earlier. They're the first Sandy Koufax. Yeah. Okay, yeah, they're, they're you know they're what I mean. A, but but a like, black Jew organization. Black Jew. Well, the they black opened the door. They did. They did. The blacks and the Jews opened the a little door. better than it. keeping the door closed. Absolutely, and then you know, and, and a tremendous number of Latin. Uh, Players have thrived here as as well, and and I, the Dodgers embraced Japanese players Not a early on. Yeah. It was I remember the eighties when uh, I can't name the player, but they started serving sushi <laughs> because so many because the Japanese community came out. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, yeah. yeah but, they, I, but I think that that's that's great. That says something about this organization. And if there was a organization that they hired the first female manager or maybe a female player, I don't know. Um, it would probably be a Dodger, and I would hope so. That wouldn't be too surprising. I think that would be awesome. Yeah, I think because yeah, be, it's part of their identity. Exactly, I think so too. Yeah, why not? Because organizations have cultures, and sure, and, and the Dodgers have a great one without without question. You know, case in standpoint, you know, Magic Johnson is one of the he owners. Bought in, he bought in. So I, uh, you know, I don't think he would buy into anything that he didn't think was worthwhile. So I think it's tr- tremendous. It, it says is. a lot. It is. It's, 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 it's something to be proud of for, a, you know, even though I am a cynic about pro sports anyway, I'm like, well, you know, we're rooting for the shirts at this point because the there, players come positive. and go so it, much. Yeah, but it's, it's, it's been a, it's a, it's a pathway. It's a gateway for a lot of immigrant people and people of color to be able to self-identify in society as, as well. It's one of the few environments where, um, marginalized people are a little bit more Teflon. You know, they're taken seriously. And if somebody wants a multicultural experience, go to a Dodger game. Sure. Because... Oh, yeah. It's everyone, like everyone, everybody's there. The it's, LA it's, it's community is there. Brings a I tear mean, to your eye. Brings a tear to, to your eye. Almost. Like you, well, if, if, if you've been to... I rem, 
Yeah, I mean, I've when I went to a, a game in Denver at the Colorado Rockies, it was not the same experience. No, it's not. It was monoculture. Sure. Whereas, you know, it's it's that's all that's a, another thing. I, when I was younger, I haven't gone for a long time, but I, that's what I used to love about Santa Monica Beach was we're all here, we're all getting along. It's it's nice. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know that's a very white privilege statement, but... <laughs> it's funny. We're all here. Look, everybody's here. I'm so glad everybody's here. I love the idea of you standing there on the beach saying that in your, like, with your off-whiteness. My, <laughs> my, my suspiciously Suspiciously something else, exactly. What is that guy again? <laughs> oh, it was the... Yeah, well, you were you were the person who brought me into brought me to crack him up at the at the comedy store. Exactly. You're not too white. You're not too I white. Like, I I should get a t shirt that just says "Not too white." Not but too white. Probably rub people. No one actually. No one. You'd have to. You'd have to be there. Definitely. I have a good. You have to be there joke. And I know sometimes my jokes really fail up with you, but this is just a thinker. It's actually not even funny. Okay. Ricky Ger- I saw I saw an Instagram clip of Ricky Gervais telling this joke to Jerry Seinfeld. Right. So Gervais says, there's this joke that's so smart. I just have to share it with you. Uh, a Holocaust survivor makes it to like age 92 and then passes. And when he gets to heaven, he turns to God and says, let me tell you a joke about the Holocaust. And God says, well, I don't think that's very funny. And then the guy goes, well, I think you had to be there. (laughs) (laughs) At Jerry Seinfeld's face, instead of laughing, he just went, did you write that? And he's Ricky was like, no, I heard it. And he's like, that's the best written joke I've ever expected that, that. That's working on so many levels, I can't even, I I can't, like Seinfeld was floored by that joke. Telling God, I guess you had to be there about the Holocaust. Man, that's that's a good joke. It's got a lot. There's a lot there. It's a lot there. You know, I always like to mention there were 12 million people killed. Some some of my people say 6 million all the time. I'm like, "Uh, can we, can we? Well, Be more inclusive. Well, I have the same problem because um, I don't know why our numbers are the same, like 6 million slaves, 6 million Jews die in Europe, which neither one of those is accurate. In my case, it was 18 million apprehended. And we never talk about that number, you know. So two-thirds were lost on the, trip. The, on the trip, Middle Passage. That's insane. They were willing to take two-thirds of a loss of human beings. All the souls gone. That, that is how profitable it was. That's huh? how profitable it was. Exactly. Uh. And then with the Jews, it was that's how badly they wanted these people gone. You know. Can't wrap my mind around that, Jerry Seinfeld. You know, like, wow. You could tell the same joke, but you make could. it, make it someone who died during the passage. Yeah, you could. You, hey, let me tell you a joke exactly. about the slave shit. Okay. Yeah. And God's like, well, I actually don't think the slave shit's too funny. Oh, well, but you had to be there. You had to be there. <laughs> if, I mean, obviously, Gervais is a solidly atheistic person. Yeah. So. And good luck with that. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. I just think he's a weird dude. Like, I just, I, I'm not a fan. I'm I know, not a fan. I, I, don't, I don't get him. I can't I get through. I, I, I couldn't even him. get through the original office. Me either. I don't get him. I mean, he's, he does well, so that's great. But I don't, I don't understand him. He seems cool to hang out with, but I don't, I don't get the comedy. Yeah, yeah, the comedy's on. Yeah, converse, he's, he's a good conversationalist. Absolutely. But I just don't get him as a entertainer or performer, you know, agree, or, um, agree. social um, observationalist. Yeah. Yeah. And then he thinks hosting the Golden Globes and being a little rude to rich people I, makes I him cool. I think it's odd. I don't think, I think that's just strange. But I, I think it's just putting on a front. Whatever. He's hiding something. I don't know. It's him. He's got to do his thing as we do ours. Right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. It's just too bad that he has more influence than we do. That's a shame. It's a criminal crime. Shame. It is a criminal crime. It's one of those criminal crimes that 
There's too many of them. There's too many, too many damn criminals and crimes. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Well, what are you out here for? Is there something good to share? Yes, there is. Um, I'm out here for Tomorrow Pictures. We are working with an organization called um, LISC. LISC is involved in helping to build and gentrify um, challenged neighborhoods, and they bring in uh, build, work, live spaces. And uh, in this particular case, they're building one at the corner of 53rd and Crenshaw. And we have the privilege and the honor of telling those stories, and we've done them all over the country, and now we are here. So that's what I am doing uh, right now as well. And the American film market starts next week as well, where all of the pitching and buying and selling for the new calendar year 2025 starts the day after the apocalypse on November 6th. And you got to go to Vegas for that. Go to Vegas for that. Yeah, because it left L.A. Yeah. So when um, the Martians land um, the next day after the election, I'll be in Vegas. You'll be in Nevada. The a Atlanta. state that is dominated by unions. Yeah, so I'll be around a lot of uh, guys with bent noses. <laughs> but hopefully Nevada goes the way we want it to. I think it will, too. Um, I, every uh, indication is that it yeah, will. Yeah, I think is So safe. I'm excited about that. I, I think a lot of things are going to be pretty good. Um, but that is basically what I'm doing out here right now. And also, and is it part of a series or, or a documentary? Or? It's, it's just a continuing um, series of stories. Mm-hmm. They're micro documentaries. What's hot now is small documentaries. You can't really tell a big story in a big way. You tell the big stories in a small way. So the more the documentary is kind of shrank and it's like three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, they're far more digestible to people and they're interested in them. The longer form documentaries now are more sensationalized, like true crime and stuff like that. But if you want to tell a, a, a meaningful story like about the Holocaust, um, it would be better to do it in the smaller Increments. Right, right. So, so if if the documentary isn't sensationalist, if it's about something real, right, you've got to make it bite sized. You've got to for make it public. bite sized. So, um, music video sized, I'd like to say. So, the new music video is documentary. There that'd you be, go. I that, said it. That'd be awesome if there was a an outlet, a platform, a place, a place where well, you could screen them. That's interesting, Jeff. Really? I know. Well, I was I know. At, you know what's embarrassing is I was about to say, like, there should be the MTV of documentaries. No, there shouldn't be. There should be a platform that already screens short form stuff, and they have something that is sort of MTV esque that is also um, creating programming that is in the documentary space. Do you know of any platforms such as that, Jeff? So we're talking about the Indie Channel. Yes. Which celebrates independently thoughtful and independently made work. Yes. From all around. Yes. Everything. Yes. And we're working together on this. Yes, we are. We're, I've given, t- we're giving yes. Tomorrow Pictures a home on there. Yes, we are. That's, that's, that's how wonderful. Tomorrow Pictures is coming at you with uh, bite-sized uh, uh, true stories. There can't be too much from Tomorrow Oh, look at that. If, uh, you have named your organization on the future. Yes, I've leveraged my entire existence on the future. On the future, making yeah. the future better. Yeah. It's my dilly yo. I mean, that's pretty fucking honorable. You must have been raised right. I think so. I, I I I was raised by a do you, do you ever joke about it and go man I wish I had been raised more selfishly it'd be I would be richer because you could have just been a lawyer right. Right, right. And you could have you could have been you could have been a you know corporate attorney Ex- exactly crushing the little guy or Kanye you could <laughs> or Puffy you know or Dr Dre you know. <laughs> A real man about town. You know, kind of, like, it's weird, right? You know? Yeah, all of those other things. I mean, they sound like initially like great gigs, but then look at how they end up. Um, and even being a corporate attorney or something like that, too, that sounds like a wash in the end as, as, as well. So, I mean, I like what I am. I just wish I made more money because then I could do more. 
Yeah. And I could help out and reach back and pull other people up and stuff like that as well. So like where I'm at is is strategic partnerships and we love working with you uh, as, as, as well and look forward to there being a world here for us in 2025 um, and getting a lot done next year, too, because this year was kind of a bust. Um, but I think next year is going to be terrific and I'm hoping for all things positive moving forward. Well, that's an excellent stopping point, no? Agreed. Because you just talked about the future. Yes. I'm looking forward to everything moving forward. I love it. Yeah. Love it. In January 2025, I just looked up at the sky. Mm-hmm. Did you see it? Was it up there? I see good things. Me too. I do. I'm, I'm afraid, really, I'm afraid I really to say I'm, it. No, I, I know you're afraid to say it. You don't want to jinx it. Like you're an Irish person or something. It's kind of weird, Jeff. Uh, yeah, I'm not, but, I'm, not su- I'm not superstitious. But <laughs> you'll play one on a podcast series. But uh, I don't have to say what I'm hoping for. We already know what you're hoping for. Yeah. And it's, it's going to happen. Hoping, I think it's, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. I'm, the, I'm hoping that my president is a well-educated, intelligent driven human being absolutely who wants to do what's best exactly for the nation and not focused on that person's own benefit right and bust the glass ceiling for everybody absolutely without question i'm yeah i'm looking forward to it i'm all about it and um i hope we keep the knuckleheads to a minimum moving forward so i'm concerned about a few wing nuts here and there but maybe they'll just stand down and be quiet for a minute and let some people that care about other people run the show for a hot minute. It'd be great. It'd be awesome. It'd be fantastic. Without a doubt. All right. Well, I'll wrap us up because we're, we're coming right up on two hours. There you go. You did it again. Look at this. We're, we're so good at the two hour chat. Yes. We, All right. To the chagrin <laughs> of old Jewish women everywhere. I know the, do they say they do. you should break call, it up? I get, into... I get calls. I get calls. Jeff. Yeah, they do. They say they break, break it up. It's too long. It needs to be like 15 minutes a piece. So you have to sit. Yeah, if you could sit down with them and say, give me your phone. All right. See this little pause button? Hit this. Come back later. Why are you chastising me? I'm trying to help you. You know they got an answer for everything, Jeff. Don't play me like that. You know, I uh, <laughs> I, I can sl- uh, imagine how poorly I'd sleep if my mom knew how to listen to a podcast. My 84-year-old mother. Right. Thank God she'll never hear this, but that's the only elderly person I deal with, and Mm -hmm. and she doesn't complain about the length of our chats because she doesn't know things. (laughs) And if I said a podcast, she could look at me like, what? I go, well, there is this thing called an iPod. It doesn't exist anymore. But somehow the word pod, whatever. You shouldn't really try. No. So let it go. I get mocked for, I, I still, yeah, she's at that stage where, she can't get sarcasm anymore. Right. And I still will sarcastically of say Of course you will. This is your time. This You've is- waited. You've waited all your life for this, okay? She can't get it anymore, and you can just unload on her constantly. Well, and, and to my credit, well, I don't know why I'm, I could share this with you off the mics, but she even said to me, like, you've taken dad's role, as in I, like, manage her life for her, right? Mm-hmm. I take care of all the financial shit mm-hmm. and all that, so... You know, I even had to go over there Tuesday and pick up her car and take it and change the oil, mm-hmm. which, uh, oh, my God, I really hate I hate driving an internal combustion engine. Those drive like shit. EVs are just better. You're insane. You're just, no, I'm you, not. You sound just like an evil person who lives in California. And <laughs> it's a dick. You sound like Is a dick. Is that a dick move to it's say? It's a total like, dick move. You're changing the oil in your mom's car and you're complaining about an I'm internal I'm like, this, this engine. Guy, it, it reminded me how just, shitty you, they drive. You were, you were trash on a stick. You were born in the 20th century. Like, how dare you? That is just cruel. Renewables. Look at, look at you. Look at you. Solar. Just, look at you. Just waving your easy. hand at your in your I'm mom's li- face. Li- li- mom. No. Yeah. She should shoot you in the thigh. <laughs> Not kill you. Just shoot you in the thigh. <laughs> that would affect my tennis game. It would. That it would be would. a bummer. Be worse than okay. So. I blew a chance to get us out of here. Yeah, you got to get a, us out on of a good now. note, right? Well, this but is still least, a good. But note. at least I haven't 
told a terrible joke this time. I think every once in a while we talk long enough for me to get punchy, and then like I'll say one that like doesn't land, doesn't land. and then you give me that look like I Jeff, know. that did not like that. land. No, but I I might sleep better tonight knowing that one of these days you might tell that Holocaust joke. I might. I might because it's. A, I will. I'll send you a text. It's, it's, wor- it's worthy of, of of you. I can't name any jokes that are. Thank you. But With that, that now but that's that a joke is yes. that joke is intellectual enough, yes. and smart enough, and yes. just historically factual enough. Yes. Completely accurate throughout the ages, space and time, without a doubt. In in the, throughout the multiverse. I don't know. Is there any other verse? All right, we're two hours. Yes. Exactly, actually. So there you go. instead of doing the closing uh, spiel where I name all the everything, just look at the show notes. The show notes will have links to Frederick's stuff. It'll have links to the film festival stuff. It'll be all good. So just look at the show notes if you listen to this so you can follow what Frederick does and learn more about Tomorrow Pictures. Follow the film festivals and the indie channel and Maybe, just maybe, if you're listening to this, you will support indie artists and subscribe to the Indie Channel. Because if we can get enough subscribers, we are really going to support this community. Could be a beautiful thing. Yes. 2025, beautiful thing. Support Indie and Indie Channels. 2025. 25 years into the 21st century, people. How about that?